how there's so much hometown love for, for the land, right? Y'all call the it the land. land. Absolutely. Y'all good saying that? Yeah. The land. <laughs> My name is Chris Brickley. I'm an NBA trainer uh, from New Hampshire. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I don't cook and no, I'm not a graph, but uh, I get players better. You know, Chris, I heard you were wise and uh, you're known for your wisdom and you drop gems a lot. So how about you get this, this little kiki session started by dropping a gem for us? Give me a topic, a gem about what? Life, Chris, life. Life? Uh, man, just be a good listener. I feel like if you don't listen in life, you don't get too far with basketball and, you know, just real life. You need to listen. And I feel like the listeners are the ones that get better and, you know, perform well. And drops Mike, but we got to pick that thing back up because we have 20 more minutes to talk. So this whole panel is called No Days Off, right? But before you have no days off, before you can reach a level where you take no days off, there's preparedness, right? So I'll start with Simone here because... There are a lot of things in the ref career that you have to do to be prepared for the game that we don't realize. So can you share some of that with us? Right. So uh, most people don't realize that unlike the players, we don't have home games. So the entire basketball season, referees are on the road. So we live out of a suitcase the entire over half the year. And so if we are working three games, around three games a week, we're on the road six out of those seven days a week. Ooh, child. So when you talk about being prepared, a lot of that is mental health. It's, it's finding some type of balance to recuperate from all the chronic stress and, and expectations and, and level of excellence. That's the standard that everyone holds us accountable to. How do you deal with that? I find really good shows on Netflix. Period. Uh, I make sure that I do something not involving basketball right before I go to sleep. Um, after the games, there's a lot of adrenaline, and it's like you can't go to sleep. We're up a lot. We watch the games over, so I try to do something that is not involving basketball at least twice a day. Um, I've just got into meditation. The NBA officials have actually, they were doing Zoom conferences for mental health, and, and it's just really like self-care, self self-awareness. I love it. That I feel like it's huge, um, kind of to go with you said, you do two things every day that kind of gets off of work, and I'm, I'm big on that too. You know, uh, people look at me and they'll see I'm an NBA trainer and they think that, oh, all day you're doing workouts or you're watching film all day, and um, the answer is no. Uh, I'm a big believer and you need to get away from it, and then when you get back to it, you'll even be better. So similar to, you know, your philosophy, I'm the same way. Uh, I use music and fashion as like my getaways. Okay. And uh, it's funny though, you know, sometimes people will see that and be like, oh, well, you're not focusing on basketball. Um, but it's like, well, you can't focus on basketball 24 seven. Um, and I, I think that's huge with, with our mental health. So that was a good point. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting to me because, you know, I work a lot with the WNBA and whenever they post you know, hanging out with their friends, they see, uh, they face backlash, right? For not being completely focused on ball. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it to both of you. How do you maintain a balance being a professional athlete and having to juggle like your personal life too? And then knowing that like, you don't owe anybody anything, uh, explaining why you're doing like leisure activities. You wanna go first? Oh uh, yeah, I think uh, that's always the constant battle, right? Trying to find that balance between how do you get far enough away from the game to give your mind a break, but stay, especially in season, staying close enough to it to where you don't lose that edge. So I know for me personally, um, I like Call of Duty, things like video, online gaming, only because it is fun, I can do it with my friends, but you keep that competitive edge, right? Like 2K, whatever you're playing against your friends, you always have that competitive edge. So in a season, I'm far enough away from the game where my mind's not always constantly worried about what do I need to improve on, what do I need to get better at, but I also still got that competitive nature to it. I love that. You better, you better be gaming. You better join the uh, the gaming league too, yeah. like <laughs> baby, baby, baby. E league, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just try to keep everything separate. You know, I keep, keep basketball, basketball, and you know, my personal life. I have a small group of people who I talk to on a daily basis, so I, you know. Because I keep basketball, I let that say basketball. And like whenever I need, you know, space away from the game, someone to talk to, just someone to laugh, and just not be so caught up in basketball. I, you know, I have those people I can go to, and just like Jimmy said, if I'm by myself, big video game guy, or just hanging out, you know, because a lot of people get caught up in being with me being an athlete, like being a gym, being a gym, being a gym, or study, watch film, do this. Like you know, a lot of people don't know that we do need breaks. You know, we get it get burnt out sometimes with a lot of 
playing, practicing, film, like recovery, everything. So I just try to keep basketball uh, on one side, you know, keep my family and my personal life on the other side whenever I need it. So it's not necessarily no days off. It's 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 do what you have to do, do what you're you know called to do, and then find balance within that, right? Yeah. But with balance, like you mentioned, there needs to be a tribe. And Simone, I want to direct it toward you because you're an innovator. You know, being the seventh women woman in history, being a full time uh, referee, that's that's huge. And the the NBA has been around for 75 years. Right. So I know you had to have a good tribe around you. Can you talk about some people that help you keep uh, stay lifted in the middle of like you having a pioneer for everybody? Well, really, my circle is extremely small. Uh -huh. um, it's really mom and dad oh, yeah. and my brother, who's like my toughest critic. Um, one or two friends, like it's literally that small. And I feel like um, it wasn't that by design. It was just like the higher that I climbed, it was like the more I felt people who you thought were in your corner really didn't want to see you succeed as quickly. If it was quick success, if it was faster than someone else's. So my, cor my, my corner is, is very supportive, very real with me, very honest. Um, they just want me to be happy. Yes. And I need people like that in my life that just look at me as a whole person. And if I'm making a decision that's going against like my health, my mental and physical health, those are going to be the first people that that set me right on track. And mom and dad really are like the ones I can truly count on all the time. Queen, your repetition is speaking to me because, you know, I'm going to have to take a strong look in the mirror after this about mental health because you said it about three times and it's, it's necessary because we, do, we don't, we, we say it, but we don't live it. And, I, and I'm thinking like, I need to really consider what you're saying right now for balance. But Chris, your whole career, there's a lot of noise around you. How are you able to filter out the noise and stay focused on what you have to do? Because especially in an era where we put everything on social and everybody wants like a piece of you, how do you stay focused and tune everybody out? Um, well, I think the whole social thing, that's like, uh, you know, you hear it, it's, it's, it's a fake world, right? So what I put out there is really like 2% of like what I'm actually doing. Um, so with, that's with the social thing. Um, I, to the point that you made with like you need people that are real around you I feel like that's everything I feel like you know a lot of players since you know this is a basketball thing they have people around them that aren't real with them and they and they are going through their career and they, they never figure it out because they don't have people around them that are actually being honest and you see it all the time um, and I think that's uh, I think that's a huge thing just having people around you that care about you but at the same time they'll like constructively criticize you um, that's huge yeah and um, Jimmy I want to know if you ever had a, like a wake-up call like a like this is real this is you know Chris mentioned social media being like a fake world not not necessarily a fake world a, a virtual world but y'all are real live athletes was there a wake-up call that you're like oh shoot this isn't what I was prepared for um I think Growing up, obviously, I mean, I can speak for myself. I came from like a small, smaller town. There was like two high schools where I'm from. So I was that dude. Where you come from, I think Chris can speak to Period. a lot of this. Just from, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Still that Love guy, that. for sure. But um, as you go higher and higher up on levels, you realize that you're going to have to work harder. And I think as you go, I think Chris and Trey and Simone can speak to this. I think as you go up, you realize that. It's, I won't say less about preparation and what you do, but I feel like it's a lot of confidence that goes along with it. Because when I get to, like I said, my first G League practice, we all relatively put in the same amount of hours, you know what I mean, to get to this point. Skill levels are, I don't want to say relatively the same, but you're all here for a reason. So I think the guys that you do see that keep growing and keep progressing, it becomes more of a confidence thing rather than how much skill you put in. I agree 100% with that. Uh, I feel like the league, right, there's a lot of guys in the league. So you take the superstars aside, and you have, like, each team has, like, from 3 to 12, the third player to the 12th player. And there really isn't much difference with skill, with the skill set. If you, I'll have them in the gym, and they'll all be making shots. They don't miss shots. They all can dribble. They all, you know, have good, a good skill set. But once the game comes, like, are they going to keep that confidence? Are they going to listen? Are they going to... Uh, be a good teammate. You know, it's all the little things that matter. But uh, I want to ask you a question. W what were the uh, positives and negatives of growing up in a small town and being the man? 
I think the positive, honestly, is growing that self of confidence that you're going to need. I feel like, especially to get to that NBA level, you do sort of need a delusional sense of confidence, right? Like, you got to believe when I step on the court, I'm better than guys like Steph Curry, LeBron, even to be mm -hmm. able to play close yeah. to their level. But I think also what comes with that is you have to know not where your limits are, but where you need to get better. And sort of from a small town, you're never, honestly, I've never heard someone tell me where I need to get better because it's like, what were people that weren't as good as me really going to say? And you do sort of build that idea and that wall of like, how do you take constructive criticism? Because I'll tell you at 18, I definitely couldn't. There is not a single thing that anyone could tell me, especially about basketball. But as you get older, you get more mature and you realize how to receive the constructive criticism that you are getting yeah. and know the difference between like just people telling you to try to bring you down and things people are telling you to try to get better. Try, uh, okay. Yeah. The positives coming from a small town is, is you know, you have a small, you know, you got your family, your small circle who, you know, the ones who you trust and you can keep around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like a whole bunch of hype. You know, it's not like, it's not too much going on. And it, it, it allowed me to really be able to lock in and focus on basketball at a young age. And the one negative that I'll say is the exposure, you know, coming from yeah. a small town. And like, I'm four hours south of Atlanta and I see a lot of guys who I play with on certain games and circuits and I, like, I want and put it like that. Yeah. And, you know, they're getting this exposure because of the, where their location and like my 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 exposure is you know down here. So I had to work extra harder. So I mean, I think that was the biggest negative coming from a small town too. But I mean, you just get to the ones who's going through that, you just got to stay the course. You know, just keep working it. Like it worked out for me, so I know it'll work out for everyone else and Jimmy also. So it'll work out for everyone else. A common theme has been confidence. I want to know, Trey, when do you feel most confident? Um, I feel most confident, honestly, right when the ball, like, jump ball. Like, when they, when they, all my butterflies and the nerves, for me, it goes out once, you know, with the charge, I was grateful enough to start every game. So whenever they call my name going through the lineup, that's when everything go away. And it's yeah. like, once the ball go up, it's like, I'm ready. Like, it's no, nothing out here can, like, deter my confidence or, you know, throw me off track. Um, good game, bad game, or whatever, I'm always confident throughout the whole game, so. I, I like this question, so let's go around the table. Chris, when do you feel most confident? Um, I feel like, you know, when given prep, like preparation and I can watch some film, I, I feel very confident in my ability to get a player better. I feel like uh, whether it's a guard, a big man, whatever, a uh, guy, girl, I feel like I'm, I'm confident that I can help a player, you know, reach their dreams. So. Uh, I am most confident almost similar to yours as soon as that jump ball is tossed I mean there's a thousand thoughts that go through my head in the locker room getting dressed when I'm walking out watching the players warm up like okay this is this matchup but it's like all that just goes out the door when the jump ball it's like hey I'm not going to be perfect tonight I just got to like rep this game so it's literally as I see the ball go up I just blank I just blank out yeah, I love it I love it I feel probably most confident right after I leave the gym because I know I've created a moment that I can draw back to at any given time. So whether the game goes good or great, I know I can go into it with the utmost confidence because the night before or week before, I put in the amount of work that I know that if I'm at the free throw line and maybe I'm 0 for 10, I can sit there and be like, well, I put in the work. So what is it to go 0 for 20? So <laughs> it's, giving <laughs> it's giving preparedness. But you know, Wilson has bonded us all by ball in the past 20 minutes. But before we go, another, another phrase that we always like to say is live like an athlete. So I'm going to start with you, Trey. What does it mean to live like an athlete? Living like an athlete, to me, you just have to be, prof uh, be professional on the court, off the court. No matter what, what sport you're playing, always be professional. Um, you know, you always have people watching you no matter what you, if you think you do or if you think you don't. So you just got to try to keep a clean slate, you know, try to be active. Um, and try to put a smile on someone else's face also. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing, you know, just trying to stay professional, the way you approach every situation, the way you handle, you know, trials and tribulations and adversity that come towards your way. Um, you know, just be a professional in every, every way and then, you know, you're living like an athlete. Okay, Trey is be a professional that yeah, brings joy to people. You know, trying Love to be it. professional, yeah. <laughs> Living like an athlete for me is just passion and dedication. We're all passionate about something, and if you're passionate about it, try to be as dedicated as you can about it. Uh, put in the necessary work, believe in it, and that's really it. Passion and dedication for Jimmy. 
Simone? Um, living like an athlete for me is doing everything 100%, like doing everything at your ultimate level, like everything, because there is no on and off switch of greatness. I feel like you should do every, if you're a professional athlete, like everything you do, you should want to do it the best that you can. Doing it at your 110%. Yes, Simone. So yeah, I have a similar, I'm similar to you. I feel like living like an athlete is uh, just, you know, giving it your best and everything that you do, but at the same time, doing it being yourself and like you don't need to um, do it a certain way uh, because you see another athlete uh, shoot or dress or um, or coach or, or whatever you do I feel like just giving your all and being yourself uh, will take you a long way authenticity is what Chris has to drop and I'm gonna chime in here and say living like an athlete is stepping into your purpose so I see you Trey I see you Jimmy I see you Simone I see you Chris and I see all y'all stepping into your purpose so continue to live like athletes and I'm so happy that we're bonded by ball and thank you to the Wilson for having us and that's it